Hi everyone, this is Cinema Big Waves and we are back with Rings of Power Episode 7 Breakdown. The name of this episode is The Eye, which refers to the Eye of Sauron that is located in the Tower of Barador. Of course, this episode also begins with Galadriel opening her eyes and we know that the Queen will lose her eyes later on. So all this makes the name of this episode The Eye. Ok, our guess in the previous episode was correct and here is Mordor and the volcano is Mount Doom and we should be happy that the story is finally getting exciting. Of course, we have to see in which direction the creator are going to take us in the next episode, which is also the season finale. In this sequence, we see that Isildur is buried under debris, but we are sure that he will survive because he's the one who chopped Sauron's finger off in the Lord of the Rings trilogy and took the ring. Next, we go to storyline of Harfoots. We are almost certain that this strange man is from the Istar race. Other Istars we know are Gandalf, Saruman, Radagast and two other blue wizards. According to this fact, three guesses can be made. He is likely to be Radagast due to the relationship of this wizard with nature and the power he has in relation to growing plants. 2. In the book, the first Istar that came to earth is Saruman, so maybe he is Saruman. And the last one, considering that this creature has a good relationship with the Harfoots, it might be Gandalf. Of course, let me remind you that in the book, the time of the arrival of the first Istar in Arda is unclear, but we will meet them in the third era. Of course, we have seen that the timelines and the characters have been moved in the series so far, so it is not unlikely that the Istar have also been affected in this case. Now, we have to wait until the next episode shows us which one of these three wizards he is, or maybe none of them. Now let's go to Khazad-dûm, where the King Durin does not allow the elves access the Mithril Orb. I am sorry, my son, but their time has come. Of course, Durin's words seem bitter in this sequence, but they are true. And we know that according to the book, if the gate is open, the Balrog will come out and destroy Khazad-dûm. When we see in the next sequence that the Mithril Stone was able to revive a leaf, we understand that the elves prediction was correct and we see that the light of the Silmaris in the Mithras zones really prevents the destruction of the elves. But the more important thing is the cause of this destruction which we see in the next sequence, the awakening of the dark forces of Angban which had fallen asleep with the destruction of Morgoth and their approach to the root of this ancient tree casts a shadow on the energy of the root of this ancient tree and it is telling the evil forces are gaining strength. As we saw in the scene where the leaf goes to the depth of the earth, we see the Balrog, whose voice we heard before when the earth trembled. Probably the hole that King Durin III closes here is the hole that later doors open with the purpose of obtaining Mithril and this Balrog is released and causes Khazad-dûm to be completely destroyed. This is the Balrog who's later killed by Gandalf the Grey. When we go to Southland, Galadriel says It darkens the heart to call dark deeds good. It gives place for evil to thrive inside us. This dialogue is of the same type of subtleties that were in Lord of the Rings trilogy, which refers to the conflict between the forces of good and evil, and Tolkien's word fans love. Later, we find out that the queen has lost her sight. According to the novel, Miriel is the last queen of Númenor and becomes Farazon's wife, and from then, Farazon becomes the king of Númenor. But we have not seen anything like this so far in this story. And in this part, where the queen lost her sight, the writers probably changed the story a little. And when Miriel returns to Numenor, she can no longer be the queen because of her blindness. So Farazon sits on the throne in her place. And later, due to Miriel's promise to Galadriel that she will send a bigger army to the Southlands, Farazon fulfills that promise. It is there that Sauron surrenders to Farazon. When we return to Galadriel and Theo, Galadriel says that the orcs killed her husband. Have you ever lost someone close? And my husband. Husband. K. 
Caliborn. Which we know according to the book and trilogy, Galadriel thinks wrong and her husband is alive. Now we have to see when the creators want to introduce him into the story. With Elrond's disappointment in obtaining Misril, the elves probably think of a plan to make rings of power for their own survival in the absence of Mithril and Silmaris Light. The first three rings are four elves and according to the book we know that neither Sauron's hands has never touched these rings nor is under his control and the light of Valinor, it is these rings that guarantee the survival of the elves in Middle-earth. If you remember the end of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Galadriel says that, with the loss of the rings of power, elves have to leave Arda and go to Valinor forever. The power of the three rings is ended. The time has come for the dominion of men. As a final point, Isildur's horse, which Elendil is trying to calm, as a reference to the horse that Aragorn freed in Lord of the Rings trilogy, and later the same horse saved him. Maybe here too, Isildur's horse will save him. There are still vague and half-finished points in this story, so we have to wait for the last part and see if some of these points will finally be clarified or not. And in which direction the creators are going to take us. For example, the identity of the mysterious man is still unclear, and we still don't know where Sauron is and what he is doing. What is your prediction for the last episode? Write us in the comments. Thank you for being with us so far. Until next week, be safe.